Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Today we're going to be talking about my relationship with Joey Bikini and that mutt, Roy DeMeo. May he burn in hell forever. Peace. Anyway, so I already told you guys in my last video about Joey and um, how I first met Roy DeMeo. In case you guys haven't seen that video, I met Roy DeMeo for the first time in Joey Bikini's body shop in Jamaica, Queens, where um, Joey Bikini slapped the taste out of Roy DeMeo's mouth, chased him, and tried to kick him in his ass as he ran away. So I witnessed that. So from that day on, Roy DeMeo didn't like me one bit. I don't think he liked me. The first day he laid eyes on me, told me to take a walk, he he just didn't like he just didn't like me. He did not like me. And then of course, once that incident happened, I, I watched him get punked out by Joey. And so he never wanted to see me again. But that's not the way it worked out. The way it worked out is I started working for him through Joey, not directly. Joey and Roy DeMeo was in the car business. Joey at this time, 1974. Joey was building his brand new house up in Westchester, and he was trying to get out of the porn business. He had a he had a porn a graphic store. He, he he was connected to like three or four of them on Forty Second Street, Blackjack, and a whole bunch of other ones over there. Joey gave me orders, and it was two orders that he gave me. The first order was, if you ever see Roy DeMeo walk through that door, get up and get out, and do not make eye contact with him. He's a dangerous guy. Do not make eye contact with him. I was a kid. I was from the Bronx. I, I, I didn't know anything about mafia, I, you know, until I really moved to Queens, and that's where they all were. I'm living with my father on Aqueduct Avenue in the Bronx, and I get a call at like 2 o'clock in the morning, and it's Joey. And Joey was always a, a calm guy. His, I never heard him like this. And he says, kid, what, what, are you, what are you doing? I said, well, what am I doing? It's 2 o'clock. I'm sleeping. He says, get, get, get in the car. You got the car. Get, get in the car. I want you over to shop right away. Come. Come right now. I want you here in 20 minutes. And of course, 20 minutes from the Bronx to South Jamaica, I, there's no way. But, you know, I did the best I could and I got there. And I drove down. I made the right turn, parked. And it was a black Lincoln town car. And he said, I want you to get rid of that car. And I want you to do it the way you were talking about. I told him st a story that... Um, I knew a place about 150 feet from the 59th Street Bridge on the Queens side, south of the 59th Street Bridge, 150 feet. There was a company that its driveway went right to the river. And I would dump all my give ups. So I told Joey about that. So he goes, I want you to get rid of that car. Get rid of it right now. So I go, okay, well, what, what's wrong? He says, get rid of this car right now. I need you to get rid of this car. So I get in the car, and the ignition is popped. Screwdriver's in the, in the cylinder. And I notice that the glove box is open, and it's all ripped out. And the wires are cut. There's two wires coming out. Now, in those, this was a 1970 or a 1971 Lincoln Town Car. And when you turn the key on on those cars and you open the glove box, there was a red button you could push and it would unlock the trunk. That was gone. And he says, take this over to your place and get rid of it right now. Don't speed. Go over there and do it now and call me the second this car's in the water. I'm driving and I'm smelling something that I, I shouldn't be smelling in a fairly new car. With the smell of death. So I go, fuck. There's a dead body in that trunk. Of course, I didn't have the keys to open the trunk and the button, they ripped the button out. And um, it dawned on me maybe halfway through the ride to the 59th Street Bridge. So I get there, I drive down. I put it, had it, right at the edge of the hill, put it in gear, and I ran with it, and I steered it until it went right off 
the cliff into the water. And I've done quite a few Lincolns in there. So, I mean, it was littered with cars. I don't know if the current maybe moves them around. So it went in, and the car was... Dick and I forgot to turn the headlights off. So the car goes in. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's lighting the East River green. It lit up, because I think I had the high beams on, too. And it went up, and that car wouldn't sink. It wouldn't sink. And it went past the 59th Street Bridge. Now it's north of the 59th Street Bridge. And it's going, and it's going, and it's going, and it's going. And oh my God, it went, I don't know, I don't know how far, because we, we, it, it just wouldn't sink. I get in the other car, where my friend followed me, and we back up. And now we're driving, I think it's Verona Street, I'm not sure. You know, 3 o'clock, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six o'clock in the morning, I think it was the summertime. So, six, so, so for three hours, that thing was on. That battery was, was kept the lights going. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. My friend drove me home. I called him at his house up in Westchester. And he said, you okay? You okay? And I said, yeah, it's done. It's done. Yeah, and, and I, I didn't tell him the part where the lights <laughs> stayed on, but yeah, it's done. And he took my car in, because I always wanted plum crazy purple. And I got a grand, and Joey painted my car for nada, nothing. So I was happy. And uh, I never had to do anything like that. I don't know what the backstory was, because, of course, you can't talk about things like that. And actually, uh, to tell you the truth, I think this is only the first or second time that I actually talked about this particular subject, you know? So, um, but anyway, just thought I'd tell that story, and then I'm going to tell you a whole bunch of other stories about um, me, Joey, and uh, DeMarco. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you, and God bless.